Let's chill down here, dude. Cause yeah, why not? Let's chill down here again. Let's push play. I'll sit by the waist and making sure I came out gasping for air and panting. I didn't want to admit it, but they were right. That's what I thought. My stepdad growled out. But I said, swallowing, how would this work out? I can't go out with both of you. My yeah, stepdad can. chuckled, kissing me on the temple, and both of them proposed one thing that they share me. Every other day, I get yeah. to be with one or the other until I decide who gets to be my boyfriend. I can take as long as I want, and if I end up choosing my daddy, he'll divorce my mom to be with me. If I ended up choosing my stepbrother, then my stepdad would not try to intervene with my happiness. So he would be sad. What should I do? What would you do in this situation? I've never been in love before, and now I have two handsome, hot men pining over my love. If I was you, I would go out of that boat. Any idea Simple enough. Would be great. Simple fucking enough, dude. If I was you, I'd go out with them both. Easy win. Hello there. Thanks for clicking on this video. My name is Camilla, and please make sure to leave a like and hit the subscription button for more content like mine. It really helps the channel grow so many people's stories can become faster animated and shared with everyone. Prior to the pandemic, I was just a normal and shy girl at my all-girls school. I never really stood out or was popular, and I was okay with that. But when the pandemic hit, everything started to change. Because of COVID-19, I recently picked up a new hobby online, which was writing hot and steamy eroticas. I do it for fun, and in the future, probably make this a full-time job. But in the meantime, while I hone in on my skills, I posted it online for feedback and criticisms, too. What I didn't expect was to become one of the top ten writers in the whole website in less than a year. The company of that writing platform reached out to me as well because of my fast-rising success. They wanted me to write each week, and in exchange, I'll be paid to do so. It was like a dream come true. I was making... I guess what? Head to my show, I guess. Oh, I can't believe it, dude. My second day here. Great. Even though it's been 12 years, we just got here when it hit 12, you know. So, yeah, that's why it's my second day here tomorrow. Because we were stuck in... How do I explain it? How do I tell you guys? We were stuck in the bloody... Not limbo, but it's similar to limbo. Like, it's not, it's not actual limbo, but it's like in space, and you cannot move. You're stuck in time. That's where we were stuck in. Until 12 years, and then, yeah, now we are here, basically, at the world. Move. So, yeah, that's why I, it's my second day here at the facility at Area 51 in Las Vegas. Is this the crib? Is this the crib? No, it's not. Here is the crib. Here is the crib. Let's head to bed in my area and wake up in the morning. Okay, it's 9 a.m.
Which two? Which two here? Smoke some weed and yeah, we'll see you too. Money in the thousands doing something I was good at, all while remaining to be anonymous by the username LittleGirl18. Now, because I write romantic erotica, I also spent a lot of time doing research, if you know what I mean. I didn't sleep around with guys, but I spent a lot of time looking at adult toy stores and videos. It was the only way for me to understand and write erotica better, since I'm a virgin. Growing up in a private all-girls school made me quite reserved. I never thought what I was going to make income because it's a huge secret. But everyone was curious since I was able to afford some decent clothing and jewelry, too. Everyone knew I wasn't rich and was on scholarship, so it was only natural people got curious. And I refused to say a word about my side hustle job hey, for the world. Although most of my stories range oh, hey. from themes and kinks, I had a major secret. For whatever reason, my best-known work has to do with a taboo love story between a dad and his daughter. It drew in millions of reads from around the world, and even made many people ask if this is a real-life story, hey. which it isn't. Maybe it was because of the um, name as well that people found it hard to believe. Not to mention, Dad would never think of something like that. I was his daughter that he raised since I was ten. He never touched or looked at me inappropriately. I thought there were times he would brush up to me when he was walking by, but it had to be in my head. One day, after I went out to get some groceries for me and Dad, he went to smoke some weed with me, and, and then, laptop, you know, we fucked the fuck for a week too. I was close enough, my profile and story was pulled up on the computer. Sure. This is what you spend all your day in front of your laptop writing? He asked. His voice low and thick for some reason as he refused to meet his eyes. Give me a second. Oh, good. This is not actual my body. This is this universe, this Scarlet King, son, body. So, yeah, basically, you know. We killed this universe, Scarlet King, body. Like, you know what I mean, the uh, Scarlet King and, and, and their son. And yeah, we took over their body, you know, took over their wife. So, yeah. This is, that's why this, that's why the Scarlet King the Scarlet King Sun form looked different to the other universe Scarlet King Sun form. This that's why I look different and uh Scarlet King Sun body like you know what I mean that creature You know what I mean? You seen it in the last episode in the first episode of this new documentary so yeah you know that's why yeah so you know like yeah you know what i mean my dad was well built i'm back cool fact, some students from my school used so to do you and i guess he's handsome but to realize your dad has read your erotica halted in any attraction sure. you've ever filled me. Cool. Answer me, sweetie. Daddy, I swallowed, averting my eyes onto the laptop. Why are you on my laptop? Sweetie, I thought you were studying hard and writing essays for school, but you're writing these kinds of rated R things? He asked, refusing to answer my original question. All of a sudden, I felt like a bad girl, like I was just a child again as I was being disciplined and spanked. Well, it's... it's... I stuttered out, trying to find an excuse. I couldn't lie, it wasn't me, since I was logged into my profile right on the laptop. I've never lied to Dad before, and right now I was having just as hard of a time. This was the man who took me in and spoiled me rotten. Have you done these things before? He questioned, his eyes narrowing. I thought anger and jealousy flashed in his eyes before it went away just as quickly. He stood up, towering over my small If I was for Dad, I would put on my dick and say, here. cherry of yours? Second, I, I felt myself it. blushing at my dad's question and meekly shook my then head. Then he could tell everyone no, really fuck. Could have fooled me, he mumbled. Could have fooled me with the stuff you've written. I go to an all-girls school. There's no way I can to do something like that. I found myself confessing. Here, did you join the smoke? Thanks, baby daddy. And I don't have You're time cool. anyways. 
So this and by the way, I'm pregnant with your baby. Cool. I know. Cool. I know. Online and I get paid to do it. It's a great side income to help around the house. That's why I stopped asking for allowance. I explained, biting my lower lips as I stared at him. Have you read most of them? Just about. He commented and cleared his throat. So how so, do you know so much about these? How do you now? Adult stores and doing research through videos. I admitted. God, this is not something I would have to my dad. Why? How do you, Bubba? You're a very talented writer. I can. Cool. I perked up at the last word. I know. Suddenly, it was like a switch went out in me about being embarrassed as I focused no, on... No, I'm not in to you again. I'm always looking for cool. a moment, however. Cool. Thank you, Daddy. Seeing as my dad was a man, you should know if there's anything that seemed off about the writing, since I have no experience. But... It doesn't seem authentic, if you ask me. He declared, his eyes finding mine. I gulped, pressing my lips thinly together. Really? Don't get me wrong, sweetie, he defended as he got up from the desk to stand in front of me, caressing my cheeks in a tender way. My you're fucking my cell. Or your cell. You're a great writer, but the writer your is cell. an experienced person who's done cool. things before. I knew it, I said, pouting as I threw my hands up in the air. Frustration ran in my veins that I was phony. But what can I do about it when I have no one willing to help me write better by performing these acts? There was a small pause. And then the room became ten times hotter as he took my cheeks and smothered it between his hands. My voice was barely above a whisper. Why not do it with me? Oh, shit. I said in shock at his question. Do it with you like, like make love with me, he remarked. If it wasn't for him holding me, I might have run into my room in embarrassment. Compared to my dad, I wasn't anything special. I was average in everything I do, even my looks. But that's... If you think about it, he continued, you can look at videos and try adult toys, but it won't capture the real authentic thing like doing it with someone. Uh, it's wrong, Daddy. So? I whispered as he lowered his face till our lips were barely inches apart. Why? I'm your stepdad anyways, he replied. You trust me, right? Uh, I nodded. Of course. Look at me, I'm fucking my sister. I don't care. Now, right? It's wrong with what? Again, I nodded. In my head, this all makes sense. If I have better understanding, then I can generate more stories and speak to the readers. This was the person that took me in and raised me. And if you trust me, I'm never going to betray your trust. Okay, sweetie? And then his lips were on mine. One thing led to another, and we ended up doing it all around the house. He even ended up asking huh. some scenes from my book or suggested new ideas for us to try as well. And I trusted him with my heart and body for the sake of writing. He took me on the couch as we bent over. He took me in my bedroom as I panted daddy. He took me even in our backyard, rough and fast. It was a bit hard because I had to keep my voice down. Yet it made me feel so much better because it was wrong. Every time I thought of a scene in my erotica that didn't seem to make sense, I would ask Dad for help in recreating it. He was always so eager to help, and my stories did get better in terminology. I was drawing in more readers who said my stories are now steamier and hotter. The money was pouring in, and Dad allowed me to keep every single one, too. Everything was going well, until I realized I was starting to slack in school because when I got home, I was either focusing on writing or making love with my dad around the house for the sake of my story. My grades started to suffer, and because it's my senior year, I was scared my college application would be revoked. But every time I brought it up, my dad would just brush it off saying, you don't need to go to college at this point, sweetie. You can just focus on writing full time yeah. because you're so good at it. See, at the end of the day, I think writing is just a hobby. It's not something no. I want to do full time. It's I your destiny. I and help people around the world. No, it, was something I did for casual it's your destiny it to be a writer. Daddy, I want to study and go to college, I made clear to him. And I'm sore, and I have writer's block. I want to take a break. No. And that was when he started to change. If you don't continue, he threatened, I'm going to tell everyone you write eroticas. Huh. I'll email it to all the students and even the college admission office about this. I will ruin it for you, so don't test me, sweetie. And then he left my room. I was baffled by him. He had never pressured or talked to me like that before. It frightened me so much that I had to share my story anonymously for advice because I don't have any friends at school. Even if I did, I'm scared of being shamed for it too, since it's taboo. So I have to ask here, what should I do? Uh. I have enough to run away, but I'm scared he'll turn to drinking when I'm away. When Mom died, he was a mess. The only reason he was able to pull through is because of me. Not my name is Nora. I am now 18 years old, and I have something to tell you. But before I go on, make sure you subscribe and hit that notification bell so you don't miss out on any more awesome videos. My mom recently got remarried after my dad left her a couple of years ago. My stepdad has a son. 
Brentley, who is 17 years old. We got along really, really well. <laughs> Actually, I'm talking about Patsy for a second. Ha, she's the character, she's this university's daughter. Not sister, but daughter. So, yeah, I change it up. Like, you know, instead of a sister, she's his daughter. So, yeah, okay, three, two, one, go. Love you, baby daddy. Love you too, baby daughter. Can you make me dead? And help me? Daddy? Sure, daughter. Thanks, daddy. You're a beautiful daughter. Love you, baby. Oh, the two baby daddy. Honey, I need to speak to you, she said, pulling me aside. It's your mom. She was involved in a car accident. My entire world crumbled down that instant. I was heartbroken. You can't even begin to understand the pain that people oh. with your parents like that can cause you. The thing is, mom didn't die. She was rushed to the hospital, but the doctors didn't think there was anything that they could do about her condition. Mom was in a deep coma. And though she was still breathing, I didn't know if she'd ever wake up. I loved my mom so much, and after that terrible tragedy, I didn't think I would ever be able to feel better ever again. Time went by, and bit by bit, I began to notice the sun still shone in the sky, that I could still be happy even though I truly missed my mom. I visited her at the hospital three times a week, and I read her story. Let's have a joint and then we'll fuck it. My cell. Done. Baby daddy. Wake up one day. But dad, well, dad was never the same. Dumb, but big off. He drinking so much, ruining everything. Instead of taking care of me, making me feel safe, he just started going out every single night. And he'd come back super drunk, tumbling up the stairs and snoring well into the morning. He never cooked me breakfast or took care of me. In fact, for months, he didn't even talk to me. So instead of being the teenager in my house, I began to do everything just to stay afloat. I cleaned, I cooked, and I woke up Dad so he wouldn't miss work. It was so bad, I can't even begin to describe it. But instead of breaking down, I became stronger, more determined to graduate and become everything my mom would have wanted me to be. I couldn't believe my dad was such a slacker, and that instead of getting worried about me, he just drank his pain away. It was unfair, but I soon realized that arguing with him only made things worse. Most of the time, I was all alone at my house with no adult supervision. But I didn't mess up. I imagined Mom was there and acted the way Mom taught me to. About a year later, I began dating this amazing guy, one of the neighborhood boys. He was just a few months older than me, and though we didn't go to the same school, we had known each other since we were kids. He 
he was there when I needed him the most. And our friendship slowly but surely turned into more. Our first kiss was amazing, and I felt like I could truly trust him. His name was Lance, and he was the first person I told about how much my dad had changed. I was too embarrassed to tell my other friends about how my dad was useless now and a complete drunk. Lance was there for me every step of the way. He protected me when I felt scared and helped me clean up when the chores at home got too hard for me to handle on my own. He was my rock. Really, and I don't know what I would have done without it. Though I still miss my mom so much and visited her frequently, I was starting to get used to my new life. One night, though, something changed, and certainly not for the better. I was sleeping soundly when something woke me up. It was a strange sound I found oddly familiar. Someone breathing close to me. I opened my eyes and saw a dark figure sitting there, right next to me on my bed. I almost screamed, but then the figure spoke, and I realized it was just my dad. Truth be told, I was really scared, but tried to push those worries away and asked what happened, why he was watching me sleep. I have a present for you, he explained, and he turned on the dimmer lights in my room. I smiled, thinking that perhaps he was ready to make amends and finally be the dad I needed him to be. It was such a beautiful necklace, and I thanked my dad profusely. I was so relieved and wondered if things would go back to normal after that. Still, there was something about this whole situation that made me feel uneasy. For some reason, I couldn't comprehend. The very next night, Lance and I were watching a movie on the sofa when a romantic scene came on screen. I looked at my boyfriend and we smiled at each other. It was so sweet. So he leaned in to kiss me, and that was when I heard my dad barking behind us. Get out of my house, you little punk. He snapped at Lance so hard. He had to say. Rushing up to my room, I closed the door behind me and cried myself to sleep. The very next morning, I heard a soft knock on my door. I looked up and hesitated, but figured my dad wanted to apologize. I didn't know if I wanted to listen to his justification, but sighed and told myself he was the only family I had left. So I told him to come in. Dad apologized profusely and then approached my bed. I thought he was going to sit down so we could talk, but instead, laid by my side so freely. I didn't feel comfortable with that at all. And much to my shock, he began explaining why he got so mad the previous night. I've liked you for such a long time, he said, making me stare at him with horror. I can't possibly love you anymore. Shit. <laughs> Fucking dickhead. Don't take it the wrong way, honey. You see, you were adopted when you were a toddler, so we're really not related. Mm. He tried to justify his disgusting feelings, but it only made it worse. This is so what if you were related? Real daughter. I was absolutely shocked and burst into tears, rushing out the door. Immediately after getting away from the door, if I that guy, I ran to my boyfriend's home. Oh, what my dick? Imagine the day I arrived at his door. Basically. Right there and then, before she goes out. I rape her to show her who is, who is in charge. Pussy. That bitch need to get raped. Just to show who is in charge. Around here, the men. That's who the fucking men are. But these fucking dickheads. Those girls are even venomous, even lesbians. Don't know who is in charge. They were programmed to listen to men, not be lesbian or fucking be venomous. They were programmed to listen to men, and men only. Or even Christian girls, 
they will program to listen to men, not God. God is weak. Go with the devil and the scarlet king. Fuck God. Ready? Yeah, I'm ready. So oh, let's do this thing. Done, baby daughter. Done, baby daddy. Let's do this. Done. My cell is down here. On the top floor. Huh, funny. I'm the one next to you. Actually, I'm, I'm the one down here. Nice. Do this done. That was a good idea, daughter. Yes. But anyway, I'll catch you, okay? Oh, good. See ya. See ya. I guess we're at 10 out to the yard, I guess. Smoke weed, watch YouTube, and yeah, you know, do what I want. Wait until I get tested on, I guess. Hopefully soon I'll get tested on. But until that day, I'm stuck in the crusty area. Hopefully one day. Press play. Oh, that bitch is so many flies. There's just so many flies. Holy crap. There's like a thousand million flies. Over Have a joint. Stairs right now. This is the main defense. And apparently somebody blew their head off just over this tower over here a long time ago. And they fell down this way. And they died, obviously, because they blew their head off. Look at this stuff. Look at all. There's so, too many flies up here. I can't even open my eyes. Why are there so many flies here? I'm trying to film for you guys up here, but the flies are just relentless. Look at this. We're up on the cannon. There it is. This is where they used to fire off the cannons. If they had to, actually. I don't know if they did. And that's the U.S. side all the way down there behind that island. That island right there is actually haunted. I'm actually working on getting permission to go there and spend the night for you guys for a video. It's really beautiful. It did belong to the military. I'm not sure who it belongs to nowadays. It isn't. I think it's an abandoned island. Just people go to it here and there. But I think you need permission to go there. Hey, somebody left their bowling ball over here. Well, these are actually real tent balls. I don't think you can hold one, man. That's heavy. It took a real man to hold one back in the day. You, you ain't no real man. Can you hold it? Take a man to hold one of these. Oh, my God, Renny. That's a big ball. Renny, you got some big balls, man. <laughs> Bicycle court. You know, the normal... And then the guards and janitor and scientists, you know. <laughs> Look at this place. It's miles. It's in the desert. It's in Las Vegas, for fuck's sake. So, if I escape, I will pass out for heat and juice. You, you know what I mean? So, even if I escape, but I don't want to. Because, yeah. This is the guards. Cordies. Buy from here. Simple stuff. Nothing special whatsoever. And yeah, these are all white that, but for different, you know. So yeah.
Let's go all the way at the end. Here we are. Let's chill here. Therefore, in my 102, follow me. We need to experiment on you. Finally, dude. Yes. Finally. Yes. Finally, dude. Hell yeah. I cannot wait until I get spammed on. I wonder which SC which prisoner is it gonna be? Which prisoner? Oh man. So what the got it? I wonder which prisoner is it gonna be, dude? Hmm. I wonder which prisoner is it gonna be prisoner? What basically? For me this way. Fair enough.
here we are. Now go in. Oh, Chris is after you. It's the Peyton. The fuck? Huh. I just remembered. Even this universe, Scarlet King's son, is immortal. That means the bloody SCP Foundation will find out soon on the SCP. Actually, they won't, because in this universe, they forget who, you know, I'm, I'm immortal, pretty much, unless I told, tell them I'm immortal, but I'm not going to, because, yeah, I, I don't see any point of fucking tell them whatsoever. Why would I fucking tell a human that I'm immortal and I cannot die and, you know, when I die, I come back, but I won't forget it. So, what's the point of telling a fucking mortal a human? I don't see a fucking point. Like, I think you and I have. Yeah, we did. We did a... What the hell was that? 
I just seen a guy standing behind you. Like, I had a guy standing. No, I actually, where are the guys? Are they all down there? Where? Oh, yeah, they're at the entrance. I just seen an actual guy, like, standing back there. Like, the one you saw. Oh, like a tall figure. I don't know what he looked like, but a tall figure, a tall man, and I felt his presence. He was down that way. Holy moly. So it's just one that I'll... Ah, something just grabbed my neck. 